We haven't fully explored Scholar's Garden. So we were here. This city has so many wonders. I never dreamed of such a place. There's a floating head. Oh, look at the year. What now? Part year. What? Oh, I didn't see you there. This magnificent sculpture takes all of my attention. I'm afraid. Is there something I can help you with? Who are you? Akir Sonwi Nifai. My name is Tom Weir. I'm the master excavator from the Valley of Sprightly Stones. I'm here to oversee the installation of this fine specimen of rock. <laughs> I apologize. I sometimes get excited <laughs> speaking about one of our grandest <laughs> treasures. The valley is truly remarkable. There's floating rocks. What makes this stone so sprightly? No one knows exactly. There are theories, of course. Some say it is divine, and others say it's simply a trick of nature, but the debates truly don't matter. The stones are remarkable. Regardless of the reasons for their sprightly behavior, I count myself honored to be able to work so closely with these wonderful stones. Of course, looking upon the sculpture, it is easy to see why some believe that the divine had a hand in their making. Uh, tell me more about the valley. Whoa, whoa, we are ah, the valley of the sprightly stones. So it is truly a marvel, discovered many whoa, centuries whoa, ago by explorers who no. saw the floating stones and from some way off. So no Eventually, whoa, people came from around so the empire to marvel at the strange so occurrence. It wasn't until Emperor and you both see that the stones were used to build. The grandest achievement is the Imperial Palace itself, which floats above the city like a grand heaven. Of course, it uses additional magic to keep it afloat. Uh, what are you doing here with your mask excavator? <laughs> Everyone deserves <laughs> a few <laughs> moments away from <laughs> work, don't they? Things will be fine at the quarry without me. Besides, it's nice to see the stones on display. The sculpture of Sergacious Ten's head is like an unending well of inspiration to me. Alright, bye. Good fortune to you. There's a floating head sculpture. Sure. All right. What is this? Oh, wrecked. There's a white man with a musket who just killed a man. As amusing as your savage dances are, once again I have proven the superiority of setting your nose to the grindstone and not mucking about. <laughs> Now bring some refreshments in a proper mug, or I'll take back the coins of my home and country. Don't you heathens know the worth of a proper king's halfpenny? <laughs> uh, generous visitor, if our customs are so displeasing to you, perhaps you should find lodging elsewhere. Please, <laughs> and leave you lot to your primitive ways. Tell them what I think of that, Squire Percival. Sir Roderick Ponce von Fontelbottom, the magnificent bastard, will do no such thing. He means to educate you all. <laughs> Good lad. Found him wading in the mud, planting weeds. You can't keep your crackers crisp doing that. God help you if you don't know the horror of a soggy biscuit. Wow. I've given him dignity, and unless one of you has the will to deny that I'm your better, I suggest you start learning. We'll have you in proper trousers by the morrow. Trousers. I need trousers. White man, I need trousers. Can you give me trousers? Also, actual racism. <laughs> this game, amazing. Um, But I do need trousers. He's right, I do need trousers. I've been saying that the entire game. Dawnstar also needs trousers. Uh, sir, your arrogance is astounding. We are a cultured people. Who are you to judge some barbarian from outside the Empire? You insult a noble and ancient people, Outlander. Your arrogance is astounding. We are a cultured people. Oh, uh, what's that? Someone stepping to the fore? Let's have a look at you. A woman? My dear. Not sure what topsy cradle you fell from, but in my country, a lady knows her place. Unless she's queen. 
The simple truth is that I have bested every one of you who has come forward, whether in tests of wit or combat. You faced a champion of king and country. Right. Now, I didn't ask to land here, but if a storm is going to cast my ship into the very heart of such a dark empire, I'll bring the light of knowledge wherever I can. You must hunger for guidance. You're like children. I mean, only a handful of you can even grow a decent mustache. What kind of place is this? Do we have to? Do we have to watch this? You blind yourself with prejudice. I can prove you wrong. Do we have to do this? I mean, this sort of crap was bad when it was in the real world. It's still pretty annoying in the game. You know? Can you now? Shall we put that to a test? I welcome the chance that you might impress me with a glimmer of intelligent insight. But I will acknowledge that I am likely to disagree just because I know you are... Uh, lacking. We will need educated men to judge the merits of our arguments. I need pants. Do you have... can I... Look, you give me your pants, and we'll call it even. How about that? What kind of contest are you looking for? I've gone to great pains to learn your barbaric tongue, only to find that none of you has much to say. Can you convince me otherwise? I've heard a distinct lack of couplets and quatrains to say nothing of pentameters. Is it any wonder you people live as you do? I charge you with defending the heart of your people. If Dude, a group of up. judges determines that you have adequately done so, I will declare you the winner. Uh, yeah. I will you here in combat later. A combat the nurse. Come on, right, let's talk. Um, whoever you wish. These five standing here. I'm sure there will be a balance of opinion. The test must be fair. You just chose. Go on, talk to them all to prove I haven't coerced them. We'll begin the debate when you're ready. You just chosen five then Chinese we'll see people. see how you fare in combat. Doubt you'll do very well. Like the rest, you're all just too damn skinny. You've chosen five Chinese people to adjudicate a debate. I heard you accept the Outlander's challenge. I'm grateful you have seen fit to defend us all. I would be honored to sit in judgment of the debate. Several of my fellow scholars have also volunteered. I trust you would judge fairly. To do otherwise would only help the Outlander win in the long run. If he wants a true debate, we will allow it to progress fairly. Of course, I doubt his arguments will have the weight that he expects. Not here in the heart of the Jade Empire. So if any of you have the mistaken impression that this is somehow appropriate, uh, I should point out that it is not. It is not the uh, the responsibility of the oppressed to explain to the bigot why the bigot is wrong. Now I know I know oppression and bigotry is, is I mean it's not really in this story in this game like it's just like it's implied. But if 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 for example some man from a strange place in the world comes along and starts shooting your people and then demands that you demonstrate to them that you don't deserve to be shot that is actually not correct like you don't you're not you're not obligated to have to demonstrate to this crazy person that your people don't deserve to be shot you see what i mean like if some chinese person comes to your country and starts shooting your people to, and demand that you prove yourself like that is wrong <laughs> There's nothing right about that. So what's going on here is not correct. I just want to point that out, just in case you're wondering. Well, if they want, if they say they're cultured, then they should bring evidence that they're cultured. No, this is actually not reasonable, right? So let's keep that in mind. What kind of arguments do you favor? I am merely quick to see my own faults, but I, like my fellow scholars, am adept at exploiting the weaknesses of others. 
scholars Heng and Zhao are easily swayed with simple facts. Cite such details and they are certain to change their opinion either for or against. Simple facts, right. What strategy should I take? The best course is to appeal to the individual preferences of the judges. We are theoretical thinkers, really. You just contradicted yourself. It is not so much the subject, but the tactic that triggers reaction. Each judge will respond only to argument styles they favor. You are so bad. If a judge likes fact, use it once and he will join your side. Use it again and he will switch back just to further debate. Other arguments may not interest him at all. Oh no. What kind of arguments do you favor? I am merely quick to see my own faults. Right. Scholar Weaknesses and uh, thanks. I right, get ready for the bait. I wish you luck. I look forward to your defense of the empire. This is uh, this is not correct. Also, they're not trees. They're rocks held down by chains. I thought these things were trees, but they're not. They're rocks being held down by chains. Look at them. How can this white man not be impressed by floating rocks? I don't know. Let me save the game. Hey, dude. Well, ready to set the ponies in motion, are we? Let's declare some rules and get to it. You don't mind if I make this interesting, do you? What kind of change are you planning? I just want to make sure that this is more entertaining than simply blathering about whose walls are higher or whose philosophers really know what's what. It will be a simple matter. Five judges, six topics. I'll pose my argument about why your foolish land stumbles like a child, and you try to answer. The judges will raise their arms to indicate whom they favor. Arms up for you, arms down for me. After six topics, if you have a majority, you are the winner. By the Queen's corset, if you get them all on your side at any time, I'll declare the match over. Now, shall we proceed? Right. Sure. I will pull no punches, and I expect no mercy on your part. Let's see which of us is truly superior. If I win, can I get your pants? Well, what shall be my first point of contention? I know, the most basic of concerns for a culture, the currency of its economy. What manner of society would use the silver coin as the basis of trade? Gold is clearly superior, which you admit by using it for important statuary. Your understanding of what determines value is flawed. Your rebuttal? So, the uh, the historic argument is that there's so many people in China, and there's so much like the economy of like the Chinese historically the Chinese economy is so vibrant and active that the need for currency uh, is greater than the supply of gold, right? Like you know, if you want to make gold coins, you need a certain quantity of gold. But given that you only have a certain quantity of gold in the entire country, you can only make so many coins. And because there's so many people in China, I mean, even now there's a lot of people in China, and it's always, like, historically, it's always been the case that, that China was has a lot of people. And so in order for everybody to have enough coins to use, there simply wasn't enough gold to make gold coins for everyone. And so we had to use silver coins. Because there was enough silver. In fact, like even a lot of the, a lot of the actual currency was copper, so there was there was kind of like silver silver bits. Like the, I mean they weren't they weren't coins in the sense that they weren't cylindrical, flat pieces of like coins, but they were like kind of silver. They were kind of, I forgot what they called in English, but they they were kind of bits of silver. But even that was only used for like bulk storage, so the common people would use copper coins. Because like, there's so many people, and people buy and sell so much so often that even silver, there really wasn't enough to make silver coins for everyone to use silver to trade with. Like you see what I mean? And and in the end, it was the Chinese people who invented paper money. It was the Chinese people who invented the bank check, which is like the you would 
get the bank to sign a piece of paper promising to pay a certain amount of money to the person who holds the piece of paper. And so then you'd put your 100 pieces of silver in the bank, for example. And then they would give you a piece of paper saying that they owe you 100 pieces of, of, piece of silver. And then you take the paper and then you, pay, you give it to someone else to buy something big. And then they'll take the piece of paper, they, they go to the bank, and then they they take out the 100 pieces of silver that you put in earlier in exchange for the piece of paper. So that was the beginning of paper money, right? And, and the Chinese eventually had to invent paper money because there was so much commerce going on that it was really inconvenient to have to lug around all the silver all the time. Right, I mean, we like the Chinese people. We, we pride ourselves in saying, "Oh, we invented paper money because we're so smart." It was really more a practical thing because because that's just how how many people there were and how vibrant the economy was. That it was just impractical. Like our coins have have a hole in the middle of them. If, I don't know if you've seen them in the game. So it was it's like a circular coin with a square hole in the middle, and you're like, like, why would you have a hole in the middle? It's because we we would tie all the coins together on a on this on a piece of string, and we would kind of carry these long long strands of coins around. It's like a necklace almost, except it's coins. And so you put a string through the coin, and so you have like a massive massive stack of coins strung together on a on a string. Again, because there was so much trade, and people kind of carry so much money around, that that to make it more convenient to carry coins around we put a hole in the middle of the coin so they can string them together like a necklace and so like people just carry on these massive strands of coins again like you know if you can't do that with gold coins because there's not enough gold to have that many coins does that make sense like 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 the, there was so much trade and the merchants had bought and sold so many things that we had to do this to make the money usable so that's why we didn't use gold coins, because there just wasn't enough gold to support the size of the economy. Anyway, that that's history. Uh, sympathetic, please understand that true value transcends currency. Mocking your stance betrays the worship of gold. Laughable. Dismissive, but you have no understanding of us. Factual, scarcity proves gold should be reserved for higher purposes. Raging. Ignorant fool you are, the poor man here. Alright, scarcity proves gold should be reserved for higher purposes. Well, you are clearly in the minority, but I can spare no quarter. To the next topic. I call attention to the arrogance of your empire. You simply assume that all lands outside your borders are the domain of barbarians and monsters. How could you truly know they are uncivilized until you've proven it by conquest? Crush them beneath your heel. You sit here thinking while far-off lands yearn for direction, not unlike what I am attempting with you. Did he just say that we should expand our civilization and therefore prove that he thinks we are civilized? We do not wish to. We know it's does not look at you. We do not wish to impose ourselves on others. Your attempts of failing. How does this strengthen your argument? Uh, we do not want to earn the same hatred we feel for you. Well, a majority on your side, but the debate is not over yet. 